Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, this one titled Searing Seas. It's a blue-red spells deck featuring Valakut Awakening as one of its centerpieces, a 3-mana instant at rare saying put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library and then draw that many cards plus one. So this is a great way to draw a ton of cards at once, which will synergize quite nicely with Ominous Seas, a 2-mana enchantment from Ikoria saying whenever you draw a card, put a foreshadow counter on Ominous Seas, and we can remove 8 of those counters to create an 8-8 blue Kraken creature token. So if we can go turn 2 Ominous Seas and then turn 3, maybe Awakening, drawing 4 or 5 cards, we can very quickly start making Kraken tokens. And then the Valakut Awakening also synergizes quite nicely with Teferi's Ageless Insight, the 4-mana rare legendary enchantment, saying if we would draw a card except the first one we draw in each of our draw steps, draw 2 cards instead. So this will essentially double up the card draw from Valakut Awakening, which is quite powerful as well. So let's take a look at our entire decklist, starting out with our 1-drops, where we've got the full play set of Opt as a cheap cantrip, letting us scry 1 and draw a card. So perfect for putting an extra counter on Ominous Seas or drawing extra cards with our Teferi's Ageless Insight. We also have the full playset of Shock to deal 2 damage to any target, as well as Spike Field Hazard to deal 1 damage to any target, potentially exiling it as well, but we can also play it as Spike Field Cave if we need an extra land. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Frantic Inventory. Now the Valakut Awakening doesn't put cards in our graveyard, it just puts them on the bottom of our library, so not necessarily the best synergy with Frantic Inventory, but the reason I'm still playing this is because all the mill decks are so popular between the blue-black rogue decks and the various rune crab decks that are trying to mill you. They're often going to put a few of these copies in our graveyard, and then when we cast a frantic inventory we get to draw a card and then draw a card equal to the number of cards named frantic inventory in our graveyard. So this is sort of a way for us to take advantage of all the mill decks in the metagame. And then of course this will also help us enable Ominous Seas and draw extra cards with our Teferi's Ageless Insight. And then we've got Blitz of the Thunder Raptor, which is our big removal spell, dealing damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in our graveyard, exiling them as well. So this can also take advantage of all the mill decks in the metagame. Then we also have two copies of Shatter Skull Smashing, which we can play as an untapped land at the cost of three life, or we can play Shatter Skull Smashing, which can divide damage to a number of creatures. Then at 3 mana, besides our Valakut Awakening, we also have the full playset of Neutralize as a counter spell, countering anything. We can also cycle it for 2 mana if we just need an extra card draw effect to trigger our Ominous Seas or maybe our Teferi's Ageless Insight. And the fact that Valakut Awakening is an instant also makes playing counter spells like Neutralize much easier since we can just keep up our mana, and if the opponent doesn't force us to counter anything, we can still play our Valakut Awakening. And then we've got some Planeswalkers with two copies of Jace Mirror Mage, which can also be kicked for two additional mana. And the plus one helps us scry, and the zero ability also draws cards, so synergizes with a lot of the cards in our deck. And then we've got two copies of Teferi Master of Time, which can also draw a ton of cards, both in our turn and the opponent's turn. And we can use the minus three to temporarily shut down opposing creatures. And then of course our two copies of Teferi's Ageless Insight. And then going over the mana base, besides all the dual faced cards here with Hazard, Smashing and Valakut Awakening, we also have two copies of Temple of Epiphany, four copies of the Blue Red Pathway, five mountains and nine basic islands. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hands, double inventory to get a bit of card advantage. Good Awakening, so we're just waiting to draw Ominous Seas. And then probably just gonna opt on turn one. Opponent on blue black, probably rogues. Don't think I need another opt. Well, I guess I'm gonna get one anyways. So don't have any removal for a Searing Thought Thief here, but Hazard can deal with some of the smaller rogues like the Enforcer. So let's just kill that right away here. And then we're hoping our opponent mills a couple more frantic inventories. Enforcer mills for two.
and a blank bloom rogue to play. All right, so what am I doing here? I mean, I could awakening and then hang on to double frantic inventory for next turn. That might be the play, even though we don't have ominous season play yet, but that's a good way to maybe find one. Is this a Zareth that our opponent's gonna flash in? Can steal my mountain. Fair enough. Alright, there's Teferi and double Ominous Sea, so that's nice. So we could play Teferi to temporarily deal with Zareth. Although... I also don't hate the idea of just playing double Ominous Seas right now. And then next turn we can start putting counters on Ominous Seas using inventory, maybe Teferi. And unless my opponent mills a couple permanents here, Zareth is not going to get any value. Nighthawk Scavenger. Opponent keeps up three mana, maybe for some counter spells. Alright, so could try and tap out for Teferi. This is also potentially just a Brazen Borrower. But if it is something like a Lofty Denial, we're probably better off going with the inventories as opposed to tapping out for Teferi. But we do need to find some removal here. Shock, sadly, not quite powerful enough. Need to find Blitz. Or I just need to make these Krakens before it's too late. Opponent did not flash in anything end of turn. So makes it less likely to be Brazen Borrower. Although Brazen Borrower is also quite good at just bouncing the Krakens once I make them. And yeah, it looks like our opponent's just gonna sit back and keep up as much interaction as possible. Let's see if this baits out a response. Does not. So we're up to five counters now. And Valakut Awakening could do it here. And we've got Neutralize as a backup. So I think that's the plan, just pass. Opponent does nothing. Enforcer gonna try and mill something. Yeah, I guess that happens. Ooh, mills the ferry. Could be bad, although we're also incentivizing the opponent to uh, attack with Zareth here. So we can maybe ambush him. So, Awakening. And then Hazards, and then I need to put one more card back. So the problem here is I still need to deal with a Scavenger which flies. So I probably have to get rid of one Neutralize and keep the Fairy to maybe minus on Scavenger. And the Death Touch on the Enforcer is actually pretty annoying too. Make a Kraken. Opponents go to Duelists. Okay. It's gonna mill me some more. And then... Yeah, we'll just move to blocks. So we're down to one. Guess I'll make another Kraken here. And 
And then you can play Teferi. After a thousand years, I'm Ooh, Blitz is great. Probably ditch a lane. And then... Yeah, I don't think we can really afford to attack. So we got a pass. I mean, I've got a few different ways we can play this. I can minus the ferry on the scavenger, I can blitz, or I can decide to keep up neutralize. Probably will be forced to trade one Kraken for the Enforcer. Another main phase duelists. Sure. Down to 28 cards here, so I guess 26 after the Enforcer trigger. Thirst to try and kill a Kraken. So, I think I neutralize this, and then I'm forced to minus Teferi on the Scavenger. Alternatively, I can let this happen, and then play Hazard and Blitz to deal with Duelist and Enforcer, which is maybe better here, actually. So we'll let our opponent attack. And then we'll go to blocks. Yeah, I think I got a trade for the Enforcer. And then first we'll attempt to blitz the Scavenger. Opponent tries to sneak in Zareth, so that's gonna force me to minus the Ferry and blitz. Yeah, maybe should have used Hazard before declaring blockers to avoid this situation. So, we'll minus probably on Zareth. Blood Scavenger. And Spike Field on the Duelist. Well, the Ageless Insight's pretty strong here. Think fast. Get rid of lanes. And then I can use Jace to draw cards as well. Ah, nice day for an expedition. And then Teferi can plus again to help us uh, make some more Krakens, so we can block Zareth. So close game, we're down to 19 cards, so we do need to try and close out the game pretty quickly here. Another Scavenger, we can Smashing. Although they didn't have the triple black to also play the Black Bloom Rogue here. Opponent passes. Wouldn't mind drawing a land so we can smashing for six. I guess I'll get rid of a shock here. And then make some Krakens. Sometimes it's okay to keep these at 8 counters so we can make a Kraken at instant speed. But I might have to start attacking. Alright, so I can smashing for 6 here if I want to. 
which does seem pretty strong. Or I can blitz the scavenger and then draw more cards to make more krakens, which speeds up my clock, which honestly is maybe the play. So let's play inventory. Gotta be a tiny bit careful here with how many cards we draw. But now we've got double neutralize. So we should be able to counter anything that comes our way. Just use this to scry. Every thought matters. And then can blitz scavenger. But I'm gonna flash in duelists. That's fine. And then we'll attack with our Krakens. Put on Chumps 1. Yeah, probably not even gonna plus the fairy here, doesn't seem necessary. And uh, yeah, we'll pass. Definitely can't play inventory and uh, can get rid of the ominous seas. And then I can make some more Krakens at instant speed. We've got Neutralize up. And we should be able to close out the game. So if I just counter this... Make two Krakens, untap... Deal with Zareth and attack for lethal. Sweet! It's a very close game here against a Rogue's deck. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with an okay hand. I might be forced to play Hazard as a land here to make sure we have three mana for neutralize eventually. But then inventory, cheap way to fuel our blitz. And we can play most of our spells at instant speed. Opponent also with the cave on turn one. Red green. We do see a cobra. So I'll need to inventory and then next turn blitz. And do I keep smashing? Don't think so. Just looking for more card draw to enable ominous seas. Follow could awakening would be perfect here. Ooh, Valakut Exploration. That looks familiar. So, I could keep up Neutralize. I probably should, and then next turn I get to play Ominous Seas and still keep up Neutralize if needed. And we'll counter the Dryad. Yeah, this deck list looks very familiar. That's a good thing. Play Ominous Seas. And then uh, play this as a blue source. Next turn we can play Teferi to start putting more counters on Ominous Seas. Blitz can deal with Cobra. Could have also let the landfall trigger happen and then use smashing, but I just want to get the fairy in play here. Luckily, they can play Green Warden. Another Blitz is nice. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, ditch the smashing. I mean, I don't have to necessarily Blitz the Florahedron here. Although there are some scary 6 mana cards my opponent could play, but they could just have a land anyway. So, just discard Mountain and pass, and then plus the Ferry. And then, uh, alright. So I guess that's gonna end up killing my Teferi here. I do love a good 
inventory is not bad. Florahedron can kill Teferi, so had we capped land, then I could have blitzed Florahedron, but then again, we also wouldn't have been able to keep Frantic Inventory in hand. Ooh, nice Awakening. Probably still Inventory first. And then I'll keep Island in hand to discard to Awakening. And we can maybe ambush a Florahedron here. Alright, luckily no scary six drops exiled. But they do have an Ashaya in hand, which, you know, is going to be kind of difficult to kill with Blitz. And our opponent's not playing into my sneaky plan of ambushing the Florahedron. Still going to Awakening, and then I should probably hang on to the Blitz here. And make a crack and end of turn. So do I cycle ominous seas? I think I do. Alright, Spikefield Hazards plus Blitz will be enough to kill Ashaya. Or I can just kill the Florahedron too, that's better. Just enough. And now I've got our Kraken. Getting in for eight. Keep lands in hands so we can uh, get rid of them with Awakening. Fable Passage can essentially see two cards with Exploration. Finds Lotus Cobra, that's okay. I think I'll save my Blitz, and I guess I'll play one land out. Hit for eight. And gotta hope Phil doesn't show up. Opponent does jump. Yeah, Phil could buy the opponent a lot of time here. Another Cobra. That's fine. Nice. Awakening. Get rid of probably just the two lands. Picked up a neutralize, so that should seal the deal. And we can make another Kraken. So I'm fine if they chum block. Second exploration is probably fine. And a Green Warden we can neutralize. And Kraken number two is gonna seal the deal here. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hands. Probably gonna play Hazard tapped on turn one since we can use the extra land in play. And we've got Shock as cheap removal if we need it. Get the Ominous Seas in play as soon as possible. Opponent on blue-green with a Lotus Cobra, which is not gonna survive. Do I want to shock or spike field it? Let me opt first here. Keep a pathway. And then probably just uh, spike it here. 
And then end of turn we can opt again, and then we're looking for Falakut Awakening, maybe some of our Planeswalkers. Blitz is okay, but we've got double shock already. Alright. So I don't have a whole lot going on here. Waiting for some card draw. Parcel Beast, or opponent on a mutate deck. Yeah, I do want to kill the Parcel Beast here. So I guess double shock it is. Alright, inventory is a nice one. Let me cast it, keeping a blue in case we draw neutralize. And yeah, just want to find more card draw spells, close to making our first Kraken. Ooh. Elder Gargaroth is a bit of an issue. Although, does my opponent take the risk of attacking into my Kraken, potentially? Blitz, I guess I can keep on top. Yeah, it's pretty risky for my opponent to attack here if they don't have any interaction. Because it would just be running Gargaroth into an 8-8 token. But we'll see. Mimic gonna copy Gargaroth first. Okay. And they do attack, so opponent's a bit of a risk taker. But it's gonna pay off here. As they make a beast. And a symbiote. Alright, so I can make my Kraken at instant speed. Smashing currently is for 5, which is not enough to do anything significant. So we'll just pass. A Rune Crab? Okay. Uh, Fable Passage to mill me for 6, and mills another frantic inventory, so if we find the 3rd or 4th copies, those are going to be powered up, and they're also making my Blitz better. No, another inventory gone, so now the last one draws 4 cards, but there's only one left. And Auspicious Terex mutated onto the Rune Crab. If that happens... Finds a Parcel Beast. Alright, do I Blitz Gargaroth now? Probably. We'll Blitz the real one. And I doubt we'll see an attack. No reason to make the Kraken now, because I can just make it at instant speed. And then now, four, five, six. I can Smashing for six. Taking out Sterix and Gergroth, I think. Could also go for the Parcel Beast, to be honest, because the Gergroth isn't doing much with my Kraken on defense. Whereas the Parcel Beast is just going to draw deep on more cards. Alright, so don't love my spots. Go to find a card draw engine here. Another Parcel Beast mutated. And an Into the Story, wow, okay. Well, that's a nice one to combine with Rune Crab. Opponent gets to draw four. Say so we're falling further and further behind. And my Kraken's not gonna keep me alive for much longer. Alright, Teferi is a decent draw. Can just plus to put an extra counter on Ominous Seas. If nothing else, I do love good luck.
another into the story. And another rune crab. Yep. 35 cards remaining at the moment. Another Fable Passage to make 2 mana with Lotus Cobra. And mill me for 6. So there's probably not a single card I can draw to get me out of this mess. Another Cobra. So we're halfway through our library. There goes my last frantic inventory. Sadly, didn't draw any. And Lotus Cobra. This is number four, since we killed the first one. Time to improvise. Blitz can kill one creature. Unclear which one that should be. I guess I keep plussing to fairy. I do love a good huh. Well, probably just keep the inside now. And then if I plus to fairy, I get to draw two cards. And that lets me make two Krakens. Oof, Gem Razor. That's unfortunate. I mean, I could minus the Fairy on the Gergroth too. Maybe that's the play. Or I can just plus. They get to kill one of my two enchantments, but I still get a bit of value before that happens. I should probably just minus. And hope they don't have another gem raiser here, or another mutate creature in general. They have drawn a lot of fabled passages, I will say that. Mutates Sterics onto Parcel Beasts. I'm surprised they didn't just mutate onto the Gem Razor here. I guess they can maybe just attack for lethal if they have another mutate creature. <laughs> it's another Rune Crab. Yeah, I can make one Kraken here to block Sterics, and then we're still taking. Alright, I see. They had another Gem Razor anyway. So they had it all. Yeah, we were pretty far behind, so it's not too surprising. The double into the story provided the opponent a nice boost in card advantage. And our opponent can still mill us for 6 with Fable Passage, so if we're not dying to damage, we're certainly dying to mill. How close is my opponent to decking? They're also kind of getting close, but I guess we're down to two cards here now. So my Ageless Insight isn't doing me any favors. Falakut Awakening, my last draw here. 
Well, I can draw a blitz. But, uh... Yeah, that's not gonna do it, so... I guess we'll go out on our own terms. Think fast. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand, double ominous seize, a bit of removal. And then we can hopefully find additional lands here, I'll keep island on top. Facing a turn one selfless savior, which I could shock here, but I might as well just play my ominous seize first. Savior gets in for one, and our opponent passes, so seems like a good spot to resolve Jace. And then... Could use a zero ability, could scry. I think I'll scry for now. At least I and like then... I I'm doing. Do I want to draw frantic inventory? Maybe not. Kind of looking for a follow could awakening here. Opponent on red-white, so maybe a dark tribal deck, maybe featuring Winota. As we see Heraldic Banner, naming red. So it doesn't buff the Selva Savior. But we do see a shock on Jace. And Savior gets in for one. Alright, so I think we'll keep plussing Jace for now. The next I will keep the opt on top. And then I think I'm down to play another Ominous Seas. And then I've got Shock to deal with Selfless Savior. Animal Sanctuary, so opponent is definitely a dark tribal deck. Robber of the Rich, okay, that's gonna potentially find my opts. Opponent, of course, can use a savior to save the robber here, too. Shaw goes after Jace. My illusion. And then we'll attempt to shock the robber of the rich here, which will probably get saved. And that's gonna finish off Jace. At least we get to keep our opts. I'd rather forget this fight. And I might as well main phase cast opts. Ooh. Don't mind if I do. And then I think I'll wait to blitz in the opponent's turn. It's probably not a huge downside to do so. Pack leader happens. A robber down. And an Alpine Houndmaster gonna search up two more dogs. Alright, that's gonna keep the opponent's synergies flowing here. Prevent them from running out of steam. But who? Follow could awakening, you say. So awakening, if I put two cards on the bottom, draws me three cards, which is enough to make a Kraken. So that's Quite tempting. Alternatively, I can play Teferi, loot, and use it again in the opponent's turn. If I plus and then minus, it still dies. If I plus twice, goes to five. That's also not enough. So it kind of feels to me like playing the Awakening might be better. And then we can try and ambush the opponent's uh, Alpine Houndmaster here. So, Awakening. Now our draws weren't actually amazing, but our opponent still concedes. So yeah, getting to make a crack at instant speed is quite nice. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the draw with an okay hand. Double Planeswalker to maybe provide a bit of card advantage. Some removal. Against blue-black, could be rogue still. In which case hazard could be useful, although I do have shock as well. So the decision here is between playing Awakening or Hazard Tapped. Binding of the Titans. Some sort of self-mill deck. We see Great Horn. They can exile my inventory to prevent future inventories from drawing additional cards. Opponent does nothing. We'll play Jace. I'll take an inventory, I think, because I can just discard it with Teferi easily. Don't need an island. Gets back Migratory Greathorn. Evolving Wilds. So they must be playing some landfall creatures, right? Another Binding, okay. Mills over another inventory. Start drawing with Jace. Another answer, another riddle. My skills are eight. Time to improvise. And I'll get rid of a hazard. Keep plussing with Teferi. I do love a good puzzle. Alright, gotta find another ominous seas here. Maybe use Jace to scry, which can dig us deeper. Knowledge is a skeleton key. Ideas like seconds are fleeting. Discard islands. See if Opt can maybe find something. I guess Neutralize is okay. And then I can keep up Neutralize as well as maybe Awakening. Although I would prefer to play Awakening after we find Ominous Seas. Opponent gets back. Boneyard Lurker. If they try Mutate I can also decide to double shock the Great Horn or I can just Neutralize. Yeah, let's just counter it. And then it's okay if the fairy takes a bit of a beating here. Oof, now wait just a minute. Don't worry, I'll think of something. Another neutralize. Do I keep plussing with Jace? think so. Double Blitz. Alright, that's a pretty good card. Should probably keep one. So we've got a counter spell, we've got a removal spell. Can get rid of a shock and I'm okay just playing a smashing tap at this point. And then we've got two active planeswalkers which are digging us towards an ominous seas, hopefully. Acolyte of Affliction will counter. Think fast. Keeps crying. I see how all this connects now. Guess I can take the inventory. Although they've already exiled two of them, so don't have many inventories left in the deck. Ideas like seconds 
We'll just discard it. And then do I main face this Valakut Awakening? Maybe I should. And keep up double blue. Eh, got another neutralize. Don't necessarily need to keep hitting my land drops. Probably have enough lands in play by now. Because if we keep lands, we can maybe get rid of them with Awakening. Or with the Fairy. Porky Parrots, I see. Yeah, let's just counter it. I do love Maybe I should just start drawing with Jace to get some actual card advantage instead of card selection. Oh, there we go, Frantic geez. Inventory. Let's uh, plus with the fairy first, just in case my next card is an Ominous Seize. And for the same reason, we'll opt first. Ooh, definitely take the Ageless Insight. And just do this now in case you have some instant speed answers for my enchantment. There's the Ominous Seize at long last. So next turn I can Ominous Seize into Awakening. And hopefully start making some Krakens. Opponents looking at their graveyard. Maybe another Acolyte of Affliction incoming. So I've got a pretty strange four color mutate graveyard deck here. Say Forever Young to put creatures back into their deck. Alright, so we don't know which order they put their creatures in. Ageless Insight is legendary, so second copy isn't too useful. Alright, can even uh, minus 10 to Fairy here, but I probably want a plus for an extra turn first. And then, uh, guess we'll Plus, Big pass. Neutralize is a nice one. So probably hang on to the Ominous Seas for now. Keep up Neutralize. Probably could have just shocked my opponent here, but that's fine. And then uh, we can start making Krakens and taking extra turns to kill the opponents before they get to do anything. Ooh, wow, Barrier Breach. That would have been kind of awesome here. Good thing we picked up another Neutralize. Otherwise they legitimately could have prevented me from winning the game in time. Because we only have 14 cards remaining. Alright. It's plus. Like seconds. 12 cards left. Yeah, we should be able to manage here. So play another Ominous Seas. Minus 10 to Fairy. Here's a constructive use of time. Sweet animation. And then I've got 9 cards left. How much do I Awakening for here? Like three or two? Let's do two. Kill the porky parrots. Can just shock face. Make some krakens. And then we've got an extra turn lined up still. And that should be enough to close out the game here. Alright, sweet. 
Good to win the game with the Fairy's ultimate. Don't get to see that one very often. And yeah, my opponent's strange deck almost managed to get us with the Barrier Breach, but luckily drew our final neutralize here. Needed all of them to win the game. So our Blue Rats Searing Seas deck, pretty unique. Winning with Ominous Seas as our primary win condition doesn't work out in every matchup, but uh, overall the deck's quite fun. Ooh, interesting sleeve. So yeah, definitely give the deck a try if you've got the wild cards for it, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend spending any wild cards on it if you're looking to play the competitive ladder. But for now, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.